Welcome back to The Exchange. We're looking at movies, malls, and motors in today's earnings exchange with the action, the story, and the trade on Disney, Simon Property, and Lucid. Joining us, Jeff Kilberg, KKM financial founder and CEO and a CNBC contributor. Let's start off, Jeff, shall we, with Disney. The shares there up more than 25% this year. Streaming numbers a major focus at Disney uh, as it further integrates Hulu. Investors also watching for updates on ESPN, maybe the NBA rights, joint venture with Fox and Warner Brothers there in sports, and, of course, how the parks and cruise business are faring. What would you do with Disney here, Jeff? You know, I want to be a buyer, Tyler. And despite the fact that it's up $3, despite the fact that it's having a great year to date, up nearly 30%, I think you have to look longer term, Ty. If you go back three years, it's still reeling from COVID. So it's down about 35% of that three-year snapshot. So I think there's room to run. And if you look technically on a chart, it seems to have the ability to gap and fill. If you go back two years ago, that first quarter of 2022, it broke down from that 140 level. So I think under Iger's leadership, his recent dunk on Tryon and Nelson Peltz, you're going to see this opportunity for it to move higher. And I'm, we're looking for the four guys to have a better understanding on how all their parks, not just streaming, how their parks are doing. And when you look historically, Ty, I think the evaluation, trading on a forward PE of 24 times, that's below its historical all-time high. So I know it's a little expensive when you look at a relative strength index, but I think there's more room to run. I'm looking for 140 short term. Short -term. All right. By the way, don't miss a first on CNBC interview with uh, Disney's CFO, Hugh Johnson. That's tomorrow morning, 6.45 a.m. Eastern on Squawk Box. Next, uh, next up, Jeff, is Simon Property Group. The mall REIT up more than 30 percent over the past year. Investors watching rent levels and lease spreads to see if higher rates are hurting retailer demand. How would you play this one, Simon? Well, this week is such a great consumer read. We just had Disney to help us better understand the consumer. And this is a little different lens we're going to look through to understand. But on Simon Group, I want to be a seller here. Or if you own, I think it's time to profit take. There's a couple of reasons why, Tyler. When you look at their portfolio, nearly 50% of their portfolio is in malls. And I don't think we've seen malls return to where they were pre-COVID. At the end of the day, you're seeing that all-time high of at 157. And historically speaking, it's at a very rich P.E. So I think if you look on the technicals here, I'm going to use 147. That's the 50-day moving average as resistance. I think you have an opportunity to buy this lower against the 200-day moving average down at 130. So I think you have to be considerate of where we are, despite the fact this is a 5.5% paying dividend yield and been a decent stock in the last year. All right, Jeff, for once, let's get Lucid, okay? Lucid Motors. <laughs> My man. Shares down more than 60% in the past year. The company pre-announced production numbers. Investors awaiting guidance to gauge both demand and competition in EVs. Jeff, can the stock make a U-turn? Oh, it's more than a U-turn, Ty. If you look at this chart, it's a disaster. It's down 85%. But I'm going to put a little jolt into this EV name. I want to be a buyer here. This is the trade. And yes, of course, it can go still lower, but I think the reason why is look at the largest shareholder tie. That's Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, PIF, they call it. They own about 60% of the company. So this is the takeover target of all takeover targets. And I think this will help them diversify some form or fashion of their green energy plan to hedge against all their oil. But I think when you look at what they have out there, they have a high standard EV. I think it's a very high end EV, but they're not profitable. They actually lost more money in 2023 than they did in 2022. But the fact of the matter, they have a huge safety net, a backstop in the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund. So I want to be a buyer here. I don't know how much higher it goes, Ty, but I think if we do see it go private or get taken over, it's going to be a pop, a big pop for an investor. But you have to use Ford losing $130,000 per EV. We don't know what the real numbers are here, but I think this is like a rubber band. You could see it down 85% from all-time high, snap back here short term. All right, let's see. We'll find out. Jeff Kilberg, KKM Financial. Thanks.